Today I'm going to be looking at one of the many games based on the popular toy car brand Hot Wheels. I amassed quite the collection of those cars as a young lad and had the opportunity to play two of the video games. One was Hot Wheels Micro Racers, which really isn't worth talking about, but I have very fond memories of the other one, Hot Wheels Velocity X. I remember this game as having tight gameplay, plenty of content and a ton of cars to unlock and play with. But will this game hold up to the harsh judgement of a 20 year old me? Well buckle your seatbelts and get ready for a ride because we're about to find out. Hot Wheels Velocity X was developed by Beyond Games and released in 2002 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, PC and weirdly enough the Game Boy Advance, though somehow I'm convinced that was a different game altogether rather than a port. The GameCube and PS2 versions boasted both single player and multiplayer racing action, but the PC version, which I'm going to be reviewing, has only the former. The menu awkwardly has a one player option with no multiplayer alternative to be seen. I'm not going to hold this against the game because most people don't exactly have a second keyboard lying around and the game was released in a time before online multiplayer was really a widespread thing. Why not plug in a gamepad you ask? Well, I'll get to that later. The game has four main game modes to play in. Adventure, which is the game's story mode. Challenge, where you have to complete certain tasks within a time limit to win. Drag Race, where you race against computer-controlled opponents, and Battle, where you, well, battle them. Joyride isn't so much a game mode, so much as a way to ride around the levels you've unlocked without objectives. It's also the only way to unlock some of the game's cars by collecting hidden items within the levels. In the options menu, we find that the game has four different difficulty settings. Easy, Normal, Hard, and Very Hard. Strangely, Easy Mode is the default, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to be playing on Normal Mode. The game's story goes basically like this. You play as Max Justice, son of inventor Dr. Peter Justice. The villain, Otto Von Diesel, has stolen a bunch of Dr. Justice's plans or schematics or some shit, so it's up to Max to find him and shut his operations down. You can tell Otto is the villain by the large facial scar and the level of disdain in which he holds the word justice. Justice. Most of Adventure Mode involves you confronting Otto's hired goons, including Nitro, Backroads Belcher, I hear y'all got some driving down. Fast Lane Frischetti, Darth Vader, and Rupert Jacoby, who is also conveniently recognizable as evil by his glowing red eyes. The opening cutscene does a great job showing us how hip and cool the main character is. Some kids play basketball after school. I have a reputation to defend. But if I made time for every wannabe with a nitrous kit that called me on, I'd never get my homework done. Honestly, the whole thing reminds me of those cheesy action cartoons for kids a little too much for my liking. With the opening cinematic out of the way, it's time to start playing the game. The game's controls are pretty solid. You hold the up arrow key to accelerate and use the left and right arrow keys to steer. Shift is used to power slide around corners and the spacebar lets you fire your active weapon if you have one. If you manage to get into the air for long enough, you can perform stunts. The W and S keys flip your car forward and backward, A and D roll it left or right and the left and right arrow keys spin it around. The more you move around in the air, the more points you earn when you hit the ground again, as long as you land the right way up and don't crash into anything on the way. The key to getting the most points is to roll around in all three dimensions at once. All in all, I can play pretty comfortably with my right hand on the arrow keys and my left hand on WASD, left shift and the spacebar. The game does have an option to use a controller, but this really doesn't work out in practice as I can't operate both thumbsticks and hold down the accelerate button all at once if I want to do stunts. There's too much fumbling around for it to be comfortable or convenient, so using a keyboard is definitely the way to go with this game. Collecting points, either by grabbing spheres or performing stunts, replenishes your active weapon and fills up your boot gauge. With your boost gauge filled at least part way, you can boost your speed by double tapping the accelerate button, much how you'd run in a Kirby game or in Minecraft. Being able to perform stunts to fill up your boost gauge and utilize the speed boosting mechanic effectively is essential in some of the game's harder levels, though for the most part the game is pretty forgiving. Hot Wheels Velocity X has a wide variety of cars and weapons to play with. Only a handful of each are available initially, the rest need to be unlocked by completing missions and challenges, or collecting gears and keys in joyride mode. Technically you can use any weapon if you come across it in a level, but unlocking a weapon allows you to select it at the beginning of a mission so you start with it right away. Each car has a different speed, stunt, grip and armor stat. Cars with higher speed drive faster, better stunt makes you rotate more quickly in the air allowing for better stunts. 
higher grip makes you turn more sharply, and cars with more armor can take more damage before they eventually explode. Another thing worth noting is that the only way to take damage is to be attacked by an enemy car. Even crashing into a solid wall at full speed won't put a dent in your vehicle. The game's selection of weapons is pretty nicely varied. At the start of the game you can select from three different weapons. The Ripper Wheels, which you jam into enemies to damage them, Armor Repair, which replenishes some of your car's health, and the Oil Drum, which, well, hurls a giant oil drum. Additional choices can be unlocked by completing levels in challenge mode. Not all the weapons in the game are used for offense, by the way. As well as the health restoring armor repair, there are also weapons which can shield you from damage or even give you a boost of speed. A common occurrence through the game's adventure mode is battles with other cars. The aim here is pretty much just to bring their health down to zero before they do the same to you. With only a couple exceptions toward the end of the game, I found these parts pretty easy. One weapon I found very useful in these parts was the Sonic Boom. In fact, I went and completed the necessary challenge mode levels to unlock it as my default. Honestly, it felt kind of overpowered. Its only real weakness is its short range, but range doesn't really mean a lot when the enemy AI's strategy mainly consists of crashing into you at high speeds. Another feature of adventure mode that pops up a fair bit is segments where you need to pick up an item and drop it off at a different location within a time limit. It's not quite that straightforward though. Enemy cars will relentlessly chase you down trying to crash into you. If they succeed, you'll drop what you're carrying, opening it up to be stolen by the enemy cars who you need to get it back from again by, well, crashing into them. These cars are fucking ruthless. If you slow down for even a moment, there's a pretty good chance one of them will come flying into you, forcing you to spend valuable seconds trying to get your item back. The key to succeeding at these missions is just to keep driving and not stop. Otherwise, you're probably in for a tough time. Another thing I should mention are the various items and obstacles you'll encounter. Point spheres, which I mentioned earlier, award you points, which also fills up your boost gauge and replenishes your weapon ammo. They also come in different colors, some being more powerful than others. Green clocks will award additional time, and red clocks will take some away. In some missions, hitting traffic cones and barrels will take time away as well. For the most part, I found Adventure Mode pretty cruisy, but the difficulty curve makes a very sharp turn towards the end of the game's story. The last two of the game's 14 missions take the format of a boss rush of sorts. In each, you navigate through a course filled with mines that explode if you get too close to them, and enter arenas where you face off against Otto's goons along the way. The enemies in these levels seem to have their armor stats cranked up to 11, and I'm not really sure, but they seem to be able to damage me a lot faster too. After a few humiliating defeats on the second battle in Mission 13, I decided I'd unlock the game's most heavily armored vehicle to try and give myself the upper hand. I booted up Joyride Mode and spent some time tracking down the hidden key. It took a little while, but in the end, all my effort finally paid off. Oh yeah, surf and school bus, baby. Time to teach these clowns a lesson. As I expected, beating the mission was a lot easier with the extra armor. My new wheels may have gotten me through this time, but even the Surf and School Bus's heavy armor couldn't seem to survive the first battle of Mission 14, the game's last. The rapid machine gun fire from Rupert and his mates drained my health faster than I possibly could have hoped to take them all out. It wasn't until I noticed the platform above the battlefield that I was able to start turning the tide here. It was packed with a variety of weapons, including armor repair, and a constantly replenishing supply of point spheres. I found blasting the cars with Sonic Boom from the protection of the energy shield to be an effective strategy. After defeating Rupert, destroying Otto's computer, and navigating a tube filled with more exploding mines, you reach an arena where you throw down against Otto Von Diesel himself. This is a one-on-one -on -one battle, but it's by no means any easier than the battle against Rupert. If the cars in that fight had their damage and armor cranked up to 11, Otto's got his cranked up to 11,000. Find yourself in his crosshairs for too long and he'll decimate you in seconds. The same definitely does not apply the other way around. Otto is a fucking tank. It's like the developers decided the best way to make their final boss battle super hard would be to set his max health to some ridiculously high number. If you die, you go back to the beginning of the mission. This means driving through the minefields, destroying the computer, and fighting both Rupert and Otto all over again. I had to do this a lot of times. Eventually I developed a strategy. I'd make sure to keep an energy shield active at all times, and use armor repair to keep my health close to maximum. It meant a lot of frantic switching between weapons, but slowly but surely I managed to whittle away at his health until finally I'd beaten him. As much as cranking up numbers is a pretty lazy and unsatisfying way to make a boss battle harder, I can at least appreciate that this battle made me think about strategy a bit, something I hadn't really had to do in the game up until now. 
Hot Wheels Velocity X has its fair share of additional game modes, so I'll talk a bit about those now. Challenge mode features 18 additional missions for you to beat. Normally they involve completing a fairly straightforward objective within a set time limit. By completing them you can unlock more weapons to choose from as your default. I got through 13 of these without much fuss, but got stuck on one where I had to collect a bunch of gears within a very unforgiving time limit, many of which I had to grab out of midair. I attempted it a bunch of times and never came close to beating it, it always felt like one wasted second was a death sentence. Nonetheless, the challenges I did beat unlocked me all the game's weapons save for the magnet bomb and the doom discs. Drag race mode works pretty much as you might expect. You race a number of computer controlled opponents, but instead of driving laps, your goal is to be the first to win three races on the same course. I quickly discovered the ticket to an easy win was to grab a set of jet boosters and just boost my way to the end. Combined with the regular double tap boost, it pretty much turns you into a supersonic victory seeking missile. In battle mode, you play against computer controlled players on an arena filled with weapon spawns. To win, you just need to be the first one to disable five other cars. If you die, you just respawn. The only way to lose is if one of the computer players ends up getting five kills before you do. To get a kill, you only need to land the finishing blow, which is pretty easy if you just drive around blasting cars that are already low on health. And that's pretty much it for Drag Race and Battle. You can't play either of these modes against real life players because, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this game is single player only on PC. I walked away from Hot Wheels Velocity X with a mostly positive impression. Needless to say, it did have its fair share of problems. You'll notice I haven't really gone into a lot of detail about the game's story. The reason for this is that it's hot flaming garbage. You spend the bulk of adventure mode meeting up with Otto's henchmen and racing them in return for various bits and pieces of stolen scientific research. Of course, toward the end of the story it turns out this was all a huge diversion and that Otto already backed up all the stuff he needed to build his time machine and go back to the past to stop Max and his father from ever existing. I could not make this shit up if I tried. I get that the plot mostly exists to justify the gameplay, but this was just terrible to the point where the game may have been better with no plot at all. The difficulty curve in adventure mode was pretty questionable too, mainly because it was less of a curve and more a case of the last two missions suddenly jacking up the difficulty when the game had been more or less a cakewalk up until that point. There are also a number of other very questionable design choices in this game. One example is a mission where you need to get to the end while avoiding traffic cones on the way. If you hit one, this indicator comes up on the screen, but the mission continues as normal. I assumed that meant I had like three strikes or something at this, so I kept going and finished the mission only to be told I'd failed. Why not end the mission as soon as I hit the cone? Shouldn't this be fucking obvious? Another issue I had was with the way the car's grip stats work. The higher a car's grip stat is, the sharper it will turn. This seems to make sense, but ironically the cars with the highest grip turn so ridiculously sharply that they become impossible to control. My biggest problem had to do with the save game system. The game doesn't auto-save, you need to manually save it every single time or you'll lose your hard-earned progress. This wasn't my biggest issue though, oh no. Every time you start the game, you need to manually navigate to the load game option and load your game file before you start playing. If you forget to do this, it is very easy to accidentally overwrite your save game. Which I did. Thankfully I learned this lesson early on or else I would have had to suffer a lot of heartbreak. In spite of its sometimes glaring flaws, I really enjoyed Hot Wheels Velocity X. I hesitate to call it an objectively good game, but for what it's worth, I don't regret dusting it off and playing it again. This game gets three stars from me. And as always, um, thanks for watching, and smash that subscribe button as you would a pedal um, with your foot if you were going for a drive in a car or something. Uh, later!